Hello everyone, I am B. Shobarani from the Department of Biology, Vidyashram Pre-University College, the Temple of Excellence. Dear second PUC Biology students, welcome back to my session 7 of the chapter 2 called Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. What did we learn in session 6 of this chapter called Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants? We studied about seed as we know that seed is nothing but a fertilized ovule. Then we studied about the two types of seed namely the endospermic seed and non-endospermic seed then followed by the very important uh, types of fruit. What is a fruit? Then the types of fruit and particularly we studied about the two types of fruits called fleshy fruits and dry fruits. So what are we going to study in today's session which is the last session of this chapter uh, 2 of your syllabus called sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The same we are going to continue about the types of fruits that is whether the what are the two types of fruits that is the true fruit and the false fruit followed by the study of two very important special mode of reproduction that is apomixis and the other one called polyembryonic. Then we are going to summarize like what were the important concepts we studied in this very important chapter 2 of your syllabus called sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Moving on to the, the concepts of today's session that is about fruit. So what is a fruit? Fruit is nothing but a ripened ovary and as we know the ovary wall forms the fruit wall called pericarp and in the last session we studied that the pericarp is divided into three layers. What were the three layers? The outer layer called epicarp, the inner layer called mesocarp, and that is the middle called mesocarp and the inner called endocarp. So what is a fruit? Fruit is nothing but a ripened ovary and the ovary wall is nothing but the fruit wall called the as you know the ovary wall develops into what? The fruit wall called pericarp and based on the nature of the pericarp we studied about two types of fruits called fleshy fruits and dry fruits that is if the pericarp is fleshy we call such fruits as fleshy fruits and if the pericarp is dry we call such fruits as dry fruits and as this pericarp is again divided into three layers outer epicarp, middle mesocarp and inner endocarp right. Now moving on to the types of fruits, there are two types of fruit, one is called the true fruit, the other one is called the false fruit. Now how do we differentiate the fruits into true fruits and false fruits then? The fruit that develops only from the ovary, that is true fruits are fruits which develop only from the ovary, such fruits are called as true fruits. So what is a true fruit? A true fruit develops from what? Develops from only from the ovary, such fruits are called true fruits. And what do you mean by false fruit? Fruits that develop from the thalamus and other floral parts other than the ovary. I repeat, what do you mean by false fruit? False fruits do not develop from ovary but they develop from the thalamus. What do you mean by thalamus or the receptacle or the torus which holds all the other floral parts. So if the fruit develops from the other floral parts or the accessory parts like the thalamus then you call such a fruit as what? False fruit. So what are the examples you are going to give for true fruit? For true fruit it is orange, guava and mango. What are the examples you are going to give for false fruit? For false fruit the example is apple and strawberry. Hope you have understood about fruits children. So what are the fruits? True fruit and false fruit. What is a true fruit? A fruit that develops only from the ovary is called as true fruit. And what are the examples you are going to give? You can give the, see the in the picture what are the examples you are going to give? That is orange, guava and mango. What is false fruit? Fruits that develop not from the ovary but from the other floral parts may be like the thalamus it is called false fruit. Examples are apple and strawberry. So moving on to the next very important concept that is about parthenocarpic fruits. What do you mean by parthenocarpic fruits? Fruits which are developed without fertilization, without fertilization or the ovary develops into fruit without fertilization. Such fruits are called as parthenocarpic fruits or they otherwise called seedless fruits. So what do you mean by parthenocarpic fruits? The ovary 
develops into fruit without fertilization or fruit that is developed without fertilization is called parthenocarpic fruits and we call them as what seedless fruits and classical example is called banana right and what is the example for parthenocarpic fruits that is banana hope you know we all of us prefer to have more of seedless fruit than the seeded fruit like we prefer to have seedless papaya uh, than seedless uh, pomegranate right seedless grapes i think we can make out the difference between the seeded fruit and a seedless fruit right so what that process of producing seedless fruit is called as what parthenocarpic such fruits seedless fruits are called as what parthenocarpic fruits so what are parthenocarpic fruits Parthenocarpic fruits is the fruit which is developed without fertilization or the ovary develops into fruit without fertilization is called as parthenocarpic fruits or seedless fruit. Example banana that is natural parthenocarpy is seen in banana and certain varieties of grapes. What do you mean by natural parthenocarpy? Naturally we can produce seedless fruits like in banana and in certain varieties of grapes. Sometimes even parthenocarpy can be induced by spraying uh, what we call it as some uh, hormones uh, like growth uh, promoting hormones like NAA that is naphthalin acetic acid then IBA that is called indolbutric acid that is these two are by, that is you can induce artificial or you can induce artificial parthenocarpy by spraying certain uh, hormones like synthetic hormones like NANA. What do you mean by synthetic hormones? That is the hormones which are synthesized in the laboratory. Hormones which are synthesized in the laboratory you call them as what? We call them as synthetic hormones like what? Like NAA, naphthalene acetic acid then indolbutric acid right. Now what is parthenocarpy? Parthenocarpic fruits are the fruits which are developed without fertilization or the ovary develops into fruit without fertilization. Natural parthenocarpy can be seen in what? In banana and certain varieties of grapes. And as I said, uh, even parthenocarpy can be induced by spraying certain synthetic uh, sprays like NAA, what is NAA? That is naphthalene acetic acid and IBA that is indole butyric acid. These are nothing but synthetic auxins like natural auxin and synthetic auxin. These are growth promoting hormones or growth regulators, right? Then moving on to the next very important concept called apomixis and polyembryony, right? What is apomixis and polyembryony? They are nothing but special modes of reproduction. What are these two? What is apomixis and polyembryony? Apomixis and polyembryony are special modes of reproduction. Now let us start with the first one called apomixis. Apomixis is nothing but the process of formation of seeds without fertilization. Process of production of seeds without fertilization. Or you can also use a word called process of formation of seeds without fertilization is called apomixis. And in most of the plants we come across, sexually reproducing plants, we come across two very important uh, processes. One is called meiosis, the other one is called fertilization. Fertilization is also called as what? Syngamy. I repeat, in some plants, sexual reproduction involves two very important processes. One is called meiosis, the other one is called fertilization. Meiosis transforms the diploid gamete producing cells into haploid gametes whereas fertilization is what? Fertilization is also called as syngamy. It is nothing but the process of fusion of the male gamete with the female gamete resulting in the process of formation of a zygote, right? These two processes we see in sexually reproducing plants. But in some plants this meiosis and syngamy is skipped. That is, it is eliminated, it is skipped. Sexual reproduction is also called as amphimixis. This is called as amphimixis. So, that is, the amphimixis uh, is replaced by a asexual method called apomixis. So, apomixis can also be called as what? Asexual method of reproduction. This is called as a asexual reproduction. That is, sexual reproduction called amphimixis is replaced by what? By asexual reproduction that is called apomixis. And this word called apomixis was coined by Winkler, a scientist by name Winkler in 1918. 
18. It has been reported in more than uh, 300 species belonging to 35 families. I repeat, it has been reported in more than 300 species belonging to 35 families like what? Like families of Asteraceae, Solanaceae, then Rutaceae, then grasses, right? So this is all about what we call it as upper mixes and the plants that are produced through upper mixes are called upper mix. I repeat. What is apomixis? The process of formation of seeds without fertilization is called apomixis or it is a process of production of seeds without fertilization. And as I said, in some plants skip meiosis and fertilization that is syngamy and that is amphimixis is replaced by asexual method called apomixis. And the word apomixis was coined by Winkler, a scientist by name Winkler in 1918 and it is found in most of around 300 species belonging to 35 families like Astraceae, then Solanaceae, then Rutaceae and some grasses also. So that is all about apomixis which is a special mode of reproduction. Moving on to one more called polyembryony. Polyembryony is nothing but the occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed. How do we define polyembryony? It is a presence or occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed is called polyembryony. It is most of the time it is actually it was discovered by Anton von Leeuwenhoek. Anton von Leeuwen hook in 1718 that is polyembryony was discovered by Anton von Leeuwen in 1718 in orange seeds common in lemon it is also common in nicotiana it is common in uh, even in mangifera also so this polyembryony plays an important role in plant breeding and horticulture and particularly polyembryony will help the farmers both apomixis and polyembryony will help the farmers in crop breeding programs right so this is all about parthenocarpic fruits so we discuss about parthenocarpic fruits that is seedless fruits then we discuss about apomixis then we discuss about polyembryony right now with this we have completed all the concepts of sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Now let us summarize like what were the concepts we studied in this very important chapter called sexual reproduction in flowering plants. First we studied about flower right. So we discussed about what is a flower then what are the parts of a flower and very important reproductive parts of a flower called androsium and gynosium. Then we discussed about androsium that is we discussed about pre-fertilization, pre-fertilization events, we discussed about pre-fertilization events that is the process of formation of androsium and gynosium and androsium the units of androsium is called stamens then we studied about the structure of a stamen then we studied about the structure of micro sporangium micro sporangium or what we studied as ts of ang anther so what did we study first we studied about flower what is a flower what are the important parts of a flower what are the essential parts and what are the non essential parts of a flower then we moved on to pre fertilization events that is the process of formation of androsium and gynosium androsium is a male reproductive structure of a flower which consists of units called stamens then we studied about the structure of microsporangium that is the anther then we studied about microsporogenesis then we studied about the structure of pollen grain then followed by the process of formation of formation of two male haploid haploid gametes right then we moved on to the outbreeding then we moved on to gynosium Right, we studied about the structure of megasporangium. 
that is the megasporangium is nothing but what called ovule then we studied about megasporogenesis megasporogenesis then we studied about pollination then the types of pollination then we studied about the agents that bring about the process of pollination agents of pollination then that is both abiotic agent and biotic agent and in abiotic agent we studied about one very important process that is mechanism of pollination in Wallisneria then sea grass sea grass called joestra right so what were the things we studied we studied about flower that is the pre fertilization events we studied about androsium the units of androsium are called stamens we studied about the structure of a stamen then that is stamen consists of what filament and anther lobe right then we studied about the structure of microsporangium that is anther ts of young anther then we studied about microsporogenesis then we studied about the structure of pollen grain then followed by the process of formation of two male gametes two male haploid gametes that is a generative cell will undergo mitotic division to form two male haploid gametes then we studied about the female reproductive structure that is gynosium and gynosium is also called as what pistil then the units of gynosium is called as what carpels or we otherwise use the word called ovule then we studied about the structure of micros megasporangium that is ovule then we studied about megasporogenesis followed by pollination what is pollination pollination is nothing but the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a same flower or different flower based on that studied about the types of pollination that is autogamy and xenogamy also we studied about gitanogamy then the agents of pollination that is abiotic agent and biotic agent then we studied about the mechanism of pollination in uh, aquatic plants like valisneria and uh, sea grass that is joestra then followed by outbreeding devices or it is also called as contrivances contrivances for cross pollination contrivances for cross pollination as you know plants will prefer cross pollination than self pollination so what are the strategies or what are the devices they are going to come out with to avoid self pollination and to encourage cross pollination all that we have studied then we moved on to the pollen pistil pollen pistil interaction then the advantages of pollen pistil interaction then we moved on to artificial artificial hybridization which is achieved by what which was achieved by two very important techniques called emasculation emasculation then bagging then bagging artificial hybridization that is which was achieved by emasculation and bagging then we studied about a very important event called double fertilization so this is all the summary so what did we study we studied about flower we studied about androsium we studied about stamens structure of microsporangium structure of uh, then the microsporogenesis structure of pollen grain formation of two male haploid gametes gynosium that is the uh, units of gynosium are called carpels that is the structure of megasporangium megasporogenesis followed by pollination types of pollination agents of pollination mechanism of pollination in valisneria and we also studied about the flowers uh, the different types of flowers which will adapt to either for now uh, that is aquatic mode of pollination or through wind pollination right then we studied about outbreeding devices or the contrivances for cross pollination then pollen pistil interaction advantages of pollen pistil interaction then artificial hybridization which is achieved by two very important techniques called emasculation and bagging and then ultimately a very important concept called double fertilization 
followed by then after double fertilization we studied about post fertilization events post fertilization events which was very important is achieved by endosperm formation then embryo development embryo development was also called as what it can also be called as what embryo genesis right then followed by the structure of structure of a dicot embryo that is dicot embryo then we studied about the structure of monocot embryo we studied about structure of monocot embryo then we studied about seed and two types of seed namely endo spermic seed or what was it otherwise called endospermic is also called as what albuminous albuminous seed then non endospermic that is x x albuminous seed right then we studied about fruit fruit again of two types that is fleshy fruits then dry fruits then we studied about true fruits then we studied about false fruits true fruits and false fruits followed by two very important apomixes then poly embryonic so these were these were the things what we studied in this very important chapter two of your syllabus called sexual reproduction in flowering plants hope you have understood all the concepts what i have summarized in this slide about this chapter called sexual reproduction in flowering plants it's a very very important chapter from examination point of view where you'll get good number of questions from this and as you know the weightage of uh, marks for this chapter is eight marks and the diagrams are also very important like the structure of megasporangium then the structure of uh, ovule then pollination all that is very and they'll also ask about apomixis and polyembryony also are about they might ask about a structure of uh, a dicot seed or a monocot seed or differences between endospermic seed and non endospermic seed so all these are the concepts which are very important from examination point of view so hope you have understood all the concepts what i have taught in this very important chapter called sexual reproduction in flowering plants uh, in the coming session what i am going to teach already i told you already once again i will summarize the chapter 2 that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants so that you will remember all the points what we have discussed so that you will not forget and we will move on to a very important chapter 4 called reproductive health and we will be starting with an introduction then about the problems and strategies that is I am going to start with a very important chapter 4 of unit 1 called uh, reproductive health followed by what is population explosion and how do we what is birth control and what are the measures taken to control birth all these are the concepts which i am going to explain in the coming session with a new chapter called reproductive health so till then meet you in the next session thank you